it's Georgia, Florida State, Four Eastern ESPN, December 30th in Miami. Now listen, this line has moved around quite a bit. It's currently starting to build in Georgia's favor. Right now it's saying Georgia minus 17 and a half. All right, do we like that? Do we think Florida State can cover that? Heck, can they win this thing outright? What would it take to win it outright? I'll give you our thoughts right now. The big question I have for Georgia is twofold. Or rather, I guess there's, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase that. Here's what I'm looking at for Georgia. Does Georgia care? That's what everyone's going to ask, right? Does Georgia have the motivation with what they've done the last couple of years, winning national championships? The Orange Bowl is great. A lot of people would just, I mean, they, they would kill to be in the Orange Bowl. Most programs would. Georgia, do they have that same excitement as some other teams would? Because, again, that's not what they've come to expect under Kirby Smart. I wholeheartedly believe that Georgia actually is fired up to be in this game, or at least fired up to make a statement in this game, for a couple of reasons. The first is, a lot of the guys on this roster that are going to play in this bowl game have the potential to come back next year. A couple of cats already said they are coming back next year. Smile Munden being one of them, Carson Beck, the quarterback, being the other. So there's the desire to have some continuity in place and kind of springboard head first into the 2024 campaign. The other part of this now is Kirby Smart. He is not going to let those guys relax at all. At all. You want to know why? Because he remembers, I promise, clear as day, that Sugar Bowl game against Texas and Sam Ellinger getting on the mic after they beat Georgia as dogs and said, we're back. Kirby Smart, I promise you, whether he would tell you or not, I have to believe he felt some kind of way about that. I promise you that message loud and clear is you don't want anybody else to say they're back by beating Georgia again. Okay, so they're, uh, I think they're going to be fired up for this one. I think, again, there's a statement to be made for Georgia, and I'm excited to see what they do. Now, in relation to opt-outs here, I'm going to speak very broadly because I don't want this to be dated in a couple of hours or in a couple of days, whatever happens here. Brock Bowers did not travel with the team on their plane. It does not mean he's not going to play. Okay, so he may still play in this game. Just hadn't gotten there with the team at the time they did. But again, we go back to his injuries and, and him being dinged up in the SEC championship game. He may still play in this game. He may not. I'm going to address this kind of broadly because I kind of feel the same way about this game either way. Now for Florida State, speaking of opt-outs, Jaheim Bell's opted out. Johnny Wilson's opted out. Trey Benson's opted out. Keon Coleman, at the time of us recording this, uh, was not listed on their depth chart. So take of that as you will. Tate Rodemaker's also in the transfer portal. So we're looking back to Brock Glenn, true freshman quarterback. He's got to be the guy for you in this game. Got to grow up pretty quick, fast, and in a hurry. Brock Glenn, your first start was in the ACC Championship game. Congratulations. Your second start is in a New Year's Six Bowl against the defending national champs. Oh, by the way, they've been back-to-back. -back, so best of luck, brother. I think for Florida State, man, we talk about how much Georgia cares or doesn't care. Like, if I'm Florida State, I would hope there's a fair amount of care in this game like think about what Florida State could do if they win this ball game even with those opt-outs that actually adds to the case you can make it for Florida State think about how much of a drop the mic game this could be for them beating the back-to-back -back national champs after an undefeated season with a plethora of opt-outs think about how that narrative would age over the next couple of years this was the team that got left out of the college football playoff with an undefeated season as Power 5 Conference champions in the ACC, and then they beat Georgia. Man, the committee sure looks silly right now, don't they? Like, as much as you want to get back at the committee for what happened on Selection Sunday, this is your chance to do it. This is your chance to put egg all over their face. Now, by nature of this being a double-digit spread, we got to have some non-negotiables here. The rule we have on this show... Uh, if it's double digits like this, two-score spread, we tell you what has to happen for Florida State to win this football game, okay? Because it'd be very easy to sit here and say, we're taking Georgia. Yeah, of course. So is everybody and their mama with that spread. Um, now, for Florida State, what I just said a second ago, when it comes to these non-negotiables, man, like I need a very, very clear want to. Because as much as this could be the opportunity to make a statement, this could also be that situation where you have the guys opt out. You know, you have Jared Verse who's opted out as well. You could have guys just kind of say, well, we don't have our full team. We don't have the guys that were a part of this whole season. We, we made our point by going undefeated. Man, forget the college football playoff committee. Forget this season. We, we did our thing. We're done with this year. 
and then not show up to play in a game like this. I would hope that doesn't happen. To win this game, needless to say, has to be some want to to them. Other part of this, I need a game plan that somehow, some way is creative, is, is creative enough to catch this Georgia defense off balance. Now, that could be something that is maybe a couple of trick plays early on. Maybe it's something to to you know go with a little bit extra screen game to get Georgia out of sorts. Like I don't know what it is exactly, but it has to, like I said, catch Georgia off balance, has to shelter Brock Glenn. I need a playmaker to be featured in this offense. Right now, I'm assuming that's not going to be Keon Coleman, so I'm going to go ahead and look to Destin Hill. He's a guy who's kind of been quietly doing his thing throughout the course of this season. I need somebody to be my matchup that I can go to consistently to win and create offense for us. Because that spread is what it is for a reason. I need Florida State to be able to hang in there just enough. That's kind of the other part of this. Can Florida State weather the early storm from Georgia? We'll do a couple of things. One, we keep you in the football game. That's obvious. Second, psychologically, how much that would do for your sideline to take a punch and then realize you're okay, that does something for you. It generates some belief. Makes you more dangerous as the game wears further and further along. Because I think Carson Beck and company, they will come out swinging. We talked about the case that Florida State wants to make. I think Georgia wants to make the exact same case now. Because Carson Beck's coming back for next year. And they've got a ton of weapons still on this offense. Got a ton of guys that can still hurt you. Like They're, just, they're so multiple. Florida State has to be able to take one of those pieces away from Georgia. Whether it's the run game, whether it's the pass game, like they got to do something to catch them off balance and just weather that early storm. We say it a lot with Georgia. We say it a lot with Carson Beck. Haven't really seen him be rattled too much. The SEC title game, I guess you could say, maybe you saw him flinch a little bit, but not even really. Like Florida State, they've got a tremendous sack rate, even without Jared Verse in the game. I'm looking at Patrick Payton, who was listed on the depth chart. I'm looking at Braden Fisk. I'm looking at Kalen Deloach. Like goes, guys like that got to go and get theirs in a game like this. You got to make your presence felt because I don't think you can just sit back there and try and weather the storm. When I say weather the storm, I mean, you got to swing back at Georgia. You got to find a way to make them just somehow, some way a little bit off balance because you cannot give them a two way go with running and throwing the football. Now, with all that being said, man, here's, here's my deal with this game. I think the depth of Georgia is just too good to not at some point in time in this game, get theirs. Like, you say, okay, so Brock Bowers, let's go ahead and just, at the time of us being live, don't know if he's going to play or not. Let's just say he's not going to play in the game. Let's say that ends up being the case. Still got to deal with Oscar Delp. Still got to deal with Lawson Lucky. Still got to deal with the rest of the, the pass catchers in this Georgia offense, and there's a lot of them. Still got to deal with the run game. Like, there's so many ways for Georgia to beat you, so many ways for Georgia to eventually have that damn break. To where I don't know if I trust the jaw of Florida State. You can take one punch. Can you take two? Can you take three? Can you take one late in the third quarter where you go down by 10 points? Can you find a way to still come back and win that game? That kind of style of game? I worry about that. Because I don't know where I see the offense coming from for Florida State. Brock Glenn, as good as I think he could be long-term in Tallahassee, there was nothing in that game against Louisville that gave me supreme confidence that they were going to be able to match scores with a team like Georgia, who's scoring north of 33, 34 points a game right now. So with that being said, I'm taking Georgia to win, taking Georgia to cover, and I think they end up winning the Orange Bowl. I think they make a statement, and I think they set a pretty good tone for what 2024 is going to be for the dogs. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.